This is Thwaites Glacier, also called Doomsday Glacier. It is located here on the Walgreen coast of Marie Birdland. One of the world's greatest glaciers, the Thwaites Glacier, is in the remotest part of this frozen wilderness. Scientists have known for a while that Thwaites melts 4% of global sea levels. They also know that the rising climate accelerates glacier surface melting. There's another factor. The Thwaites Glacier's partnership, a five-year, $50 million UK-US research venture, sent a temperature probe dubbed Icefin 600 meters down to the glacier's ocean water at the same time as Seymour Island's record temperature. That probe found that the ocean water washing against the glacier's base is 2 degrees Celsius above freezing, unlike the surface waters which are minus 2 degrees Celsius. Melting ice is a good temperature. And then what's generating such big air and water temperature increases? How much faster are Thwaites glaciers melting? What if everything fails? We'll be having a look at these questions in today's video, so let's dive in. Thwaites Glacier is one of the world's largest glaciers, about the size of Britain or Florida. It's hard to reach as it's on the westernmost side of the least navigable part of the continent, more than a thousand miles from the nearest research station. And the intrepid scientists in the latest expedition set up a dedicated camp halfway down the glacier so the old propeller planes that ferried them to the front edge could refuel before the final leg of the flight. Before the Thwaites Glacier Collaboration Expedition, only four people had stood at the glacier's brink. The expedition's advance party was those four. The Gulf Stream takes warm water across the Atlantic and up towards the Arctic region. When that warmer, saltier, and denser water hits the colder, fresher Arctic waters, it sinks and gets caught up in the deep water of Atlantic currents that take it all the way down to the Antarctic, where some of it forms part of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, a relatively warm flow of water circulating the entire continent. The water flows back north and across to rejoin the Gulf Stream, completing the continuous circuit. Water flow has occurred for millennia. According to scientists examining the consequences, a warmer Pacific has changed wind patterns in the airstreams above, which is modifying water flows and allowing the deep seas to come into contact with the continental shelf more. Only 2 or 3 degrees Celsius differ, like many other climate change issues. If you're enjoying the video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you don't subscribe, you'll find yourself in Antarctica one day, freezing to death, so you'd better subscribe. The scale makes the effect spectacular. Is the air temperature rising? According to this Guardian research, ocean current shifts and El Nino occurrences are delivering warmer air south to locations it previously wouldn't have reached. Antarctica's effects differ. The Antarctic Peninsula has suffered most. Carlos Schaefer, who works on Toronto, a Brazilian government project that analyzes climate change's effects on permafrost and wildlife in 23 Antarctic sites, noted that these areas may foreshadow other regions. He claimed sentinel locations like the South Shetlands and Antarctic Peninsula predict future events. Thwaites Glacier, which is 100 miles wide, loses two mile-long ice chunks each year. Over time, Antarctic Glacier's leading edges extend forward from the mainland, creating perilous conditions. I shelled the glacier's grounding lines. Glaciers normally broke off into the sea due to top and bottom erosion. Icebergs fresh in the surrounding ocean drive deeper, warmer water down toward the glacier's base, completing this glacial renewal cycle. All happens very slowly, and the volume of ice lost into the lake is usually compensated out by fresh new snowfalls on the land building the glacier mass back up again, so the cycle continues. The ice fin probe's temperature readings from this mission suggest a substantially higher erosion rate at the base due to warmer water approaching the grounding line. Professor David Holland, one of the Thwaites Glacier Collaboration Expedition's senior oceanographers, said warmer water can increase melt rates by a hundred times as greater parts slide off the glacier's front. Because they leave thicker shelf pieces behind, gravity pushes them ahead faster. According to scientists, melting glaciers release ice even faster yet through another feedback cycle. That seems so prevalent in our warming climate. Thus, Thwaites glaciers may soon collapse. Glaciologists say it's unlikely, but the melting is quick enough to disappear in a decade or a century. 
Thwaites Glacier holds enough fresh water to increase global sea levels by 50 centimeters. That's huge! Add to that the rises we're already witnessing due to our warming atmosphere, and the level doubles to more than a meter, affecting low-lying coastal regions worldwide. Higher water levels will also greatly increase storms and storm surges. The BBC's Justin Rowlett joined the journey down to Antarctica and spoke to Professor David Vaughan, Director of Science at the British Antarctic Survey, about the effects. He predicted that a 50-centimeter sea level rise might cause 1,000-year storms, driving every 100 years. But a meter of sea level rise means a millennial storm every decade. Rising sea levels may affect three times more people by 2050 than previously estimated. According to a European Commission Joint Research Center study, 300 million dwellings will be flooded by coastal flooding in 30 years, and 630 million by 2100, if greenhouse gas emissions continue as usual. If we needed another reason, this year's COP26 climate conference in Glasgow will require an absolutely unanimous commitment from every participating nation and as many US states as possible to a collaborative program of radical emission reductions with a focus on the rapid move away from fossil fuels and into low or zero carbon energy production, coupled with vast new infrastructure projects, building distributed smart grids, and e-mobility. We'll also need global reforestation and land regeneration to keep global temperatures below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels to remove carbon from the atmosphere and store it in natural ecosystems. If we succeed, it will be the largest coordinated global endeavor since the Second World War, creating millions of employment over a generation. So this was all related to the Doomsday Glacier collapsing. Hope you enjoyed our video. If yes, then hit the like button and remember, to avoid finding yourself in Antarctica one day freezing to death, make sure you subscribe to our channel. What are your thoughts on the Doomsday Glacier collapsing? What would you do if that happens? Share with us in the comment section. We'll see you in the next video.